Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Abandoned Cockpit. With me, we have Dane, and I am Bjorn, <laughs> and no Luke again. Your background's hilarious. <laughs> Isn't not, awesome? only that, not only that, but you changed your shirt. Uh, you don't need to tell everybody that. I'm just trying to make it so it looks like we're I'm in the same doing shirt, it. Bjorn. I can't say that. <laughs> I uh, know. I'm just trying to make it look different than the previous episode. So give me a freaking break, man. Oh, okay. Can I show you something I got? Yeah. I'd love to see it. Oh. It looks like it has nothing to do with the conversation topic that we were going to talk about. But if you want to go that way, we can do that. Well, I'd... I'm not going to open it up. I got two of them. So hey, you're getting a it's third, a new comic book. Right? Huh? Yeah, so it's a new comic book company. I got the cover A. It took me an hour and a half to get just because it, it, it was awesome, but kind of annoying at the same It wasn't really annoying. It just kind of sucked for me because it took me so long to actually place my order. But so many people were on it right away, which is great. You know, because when yeah. you're excited about something for a long time, you want the website to have difficulties when they first open up for their first products. You know, that's because that means so many people are trying to get it. It's having a hard time running. So it took me an hour and a half to order. I got cover A and I got cover B. But it was signed by Eric July. And then I think the campaign was like 75 days, maybe. And then later on, I got cover C, which I'm assuming is going to just be mass produced because you can't get A or B mm. anymore. And then um, then they had limited edition cards you could get that kind of gave a glimpse into the future of the characters that are going to come into the universe later on. Hmm. And they're not just going to be ripoffs of the uh, current Marvel or DC universe? No, he's so Eric July actually started this to directly compete with Marvel and DC. But you know what I mean? Like a a lot of DC superheroes are the same as the Marvel ones, just with a different name. Like, oh, oh, this person can fly and talk to bugs, and this person can control the weather or whatever. Like, so I have these comic books right now, and I've had them for a few days, probably over a week, and I haven't read them. I haven't even opened them. That's how you make so, sure they retain their value. Yeah, I bought cases for them, and they were they weren't thick enough because the the books are ninety six pages, so it wouldn't hold it. So I had to put it back in there, and I I bought cover C to read cover C. Right. So and I haven't gotten that one yet, but um, I I don't know. He's a very creative dude. I don't think he's just copycatting Marvel or DC. Good. I can't say for sh- for certain, but I would bet money on it. So I'm excited about it. I think it'll be a good story. Can I show you a book that I got? Let's see it. The Layman's Parallel New Testament. I got it for a dollar at a at a garage sale, and it is four different versions, all side by side. So, like when you read whatever verse, ah, crap, can't really see it. Like it's translated four times within these two pages. Okay. So it's just so like if you wanted like to a, read. It's a comparison of like the King James Version, the Amplified New Testament, the Living New Testament, and the Revised Standard Version, whatever that means. But it's the same story, the same verses or whatever, but phrased four different ways. And every page is... It's the four different ones on every single page. Yeah, so when you open it up, the two pages that you're looking at is like 
all the, four versions all four versions yeah that's kind of cool i just thought it was kind of interesting yeah it was a dollar so I was like yeah screw it well i collect books it. yeah i don't read them i just collect them me too <laughs> it's been a while since <laughs> i've actually read a lot of books the only thing okay so when we were talking a little earlier i was just gonna complain about preppers for a little yeah. bit and I don't really actually know a whole lot of them. What are you doing to your face? And why are you doing it when we're recording? Oh, I don't know. I'm drinking. Seems like a good thing to do. That doesn't look like drinking. I was um, listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, like if you watch preppers or if you talk to people, and even if you really think about it yourself without actually really thinking about it, you start to think where it's all on me. I have to rely completely on me. I have to do all this just by myself. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like is part of that, um, I guess two things. Uh one thing other people might think you're crazy and kind of shun you or not listen to you or kind of the whole Noah's Ark thing, where they're just like, Yeah, freaking crazy guy, like He's a prepper. Like, what a loon. Like, there's a little stigma there. Maybe. But then there's also the fact that, like, if you're stockpiling a bunch of stuff, you don't really want to advertise that. You don't necessarily want other people to know that you have, you know, a bunch of ammunition or food or whatever it is. Like, you don't want to show your hand, necessarily. I agree with that. But at the same time, I disagree with that fair because i was kind of playing devil's advocate a little bit so right so i think i think a lot of it is what's the first thing that you said um just being seen as a crazy person or not people not wanting to so that that is true after what's happened in the last few years like if anybody thinks that you're fucking crazy for trying to hold wealth whether it's through silver or gold or making sure that your family has food in case the government tries to shut down the economy again, or that you're just trying to get in front of inflation by buying extra food. If somebody thinks you're crazy for that, who cares at this point? Yeah. At this point, you should recognize they're just stupid. You know, they they can not be doing it. And they cannot agree with you and not be stupid. But if they think you're an idiot or that you're crazy for trying to hold things, just pay no attention to them. Who cares what they say? And really, uh, between the two things I mentioned, I guess it comes down to finding the right people that you can trust and work with. Well, so the second thing you said was not showing your hands, right? Right. Um, and it kind of depends where you live and who you know, I guess. But um, I don't know. I kind of think if you, if the people who are starting to build up whatever, I would call it wealth. Honestly, at this point, I would call it wealth. And I'll explain that in a second. But if... um if we started showing other people that we might encourage other people to do that. So if we got other people to do that, it would be less scary for us. So like with, when it comes to preppers, they think they're all alone and they kind of like hide. And I think that's idiotic. They should be connecting with people who don't even believe anything like that. Right. Right. So you don't have to do everything yourself. You could find a farmer who who raises pigs and then figure out how to process them yourself. Or you can find a farmer or multiple farmers who have layers and buy eggs from them and get a shit ton of eggs from them. And I think that people are missing the idea. Like, uh, if you want to survive, you need the community and you need other people to do it you can't do all this shit on your own more than likely you're correct yep 
I, I mean, th- th- there, there are there, there be... are instances of people that can disappear into the woods and live on their own. Uh, okay. I mean, it, okay. It's, I'm sorry. It's, there's there's it's probably possible. 0.001% of the entire population. It's possible. Could not actually practical. Go it's possible. Not practical. It's possible for an extremely small percentage of people to actually go and do that. And likely they would be a single person and not a family, right? Right. It's super outliers that don't even fucking matter. Just because this happened before doesn't mean it's relevant. And I'm not trying to give you shit. I'm just saying it. it is possible. There's very few people who could do it, right? But it's not the people who are trying to prep and be able to survive, I don't know, zombie apocalypse. Like, you need other people, and they don't need to be on board with whatever you think is going to happen in the future. Because if things get bad, people are just going to come together. And if you're already coming together before something goes bad, well, what do you think is going to happen when it does get bad? You're automatically, at least at first, you're going to start trying to rely on other people. And then when it gets, if it got really, really bad, that's when people would start turning. But I mean, if you're building the connection with people and making people better and connecting people together before a shitty thing happens, it would just be if something really shitty happened, that's where you would go to in the first place. I'm going to add a little bit to this. I think uh, it's important that you have a team, you know, like we've talked about cadres in the past. But like it's it's important if you have a core group of people that you can trust and work with, and there's you know some sort of uh, bond, absolute trust. You know we've got family or friends, you know the ride or die kind of people. But it's also important to have a network. Mm-hmm. And what I'm so, not, I'm I'm not talking about the ride or die kind of people. I'm just talking about connecting with somebody who grows a garden of stuff that you don't want to grow. Right. So it's Earth. important to know, to have the connections and the network of the different kind of assets that the community can provide and know how to access them and barter or just even communicate with them, I guess. Right. Yeah. So like, I don't need to have chickens that can lay eggs. If because you know there's someone somebody that does. Right. Cause there's somebody down there who does. There's two people within three miles of me who does. And then somebody you work with does. So I'm not saying it's a bad idea to have layers. I'm just saying maybe you could just connect with somebody who does. And when you watch like the prepper show, nobody talks about fucking connecting with other people. Right. It's like, oh, I'm just stockpiling for myself. And see, I want to I want to flip this a little bit further that I think you do need to be able to rely on just yourself in some instances in some moments and by bettering yourself making yourself more ready by preparing for uh, whether it's building your own skills or you know whatever coming up with plans for circumstances if you can rely on yourself it's good because that might come up you know, once a week where you've got nobody else, you've only got yourself. And that's, that's everyday life too. Like if you don't know how to change your own fucking car tire, like that's stupid. Learn how to do that because probably going to run into a situation where you're the only person you got, you got to be able to do that. You got to be able to help yourself in situations. So I think you do need to be able to, in a prepper sense, be able to rely on yourself, but overall, if you're in that network, if you're on that team, you don't have to do it all the time. You don't you don't have to rely on yourself 100% of the time. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'm not saying don't rely on yourself. I'm saying I know you're not. I'm just I'm like, adding to the conversation. Get better every day and learn new skills and figure it out. I'm just saying like when you watch preppers and listen to people, they're like, you need to just stockpile. Well, yeah, they approach it as like an isolationist, like just hide away permit shun the world like lock the door literally board up the windows have you seen the episodes of the preppers where like they run outside it's kind of like it's it's not really a game show but it's like uh like oh this is the 
the prepper family in Louisiana and we're going to tell them, you know, we're going to, we're going to grade their readiness. Have you seen that show? I mean, I've watched preppers before. Maybe, maybe that's, sure maybe it's just called one. preppers. Yeah. But I mean, they're running outside and like boarding up their windows. Like they come out with like these freaking big plywood sheets and like, bzz, 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 like boarding up all the windows on their first floor, which I'm not saying it's stupid, but when you just try to shut down the entire world, I don't think that's the right approach either. Yeah. So for one, we need each other to survive. And two, we need each other to beat whatever the horrible thing that is coming. Whatever it is. You know, so that none of them, none of the shows that I've ever watched, none of the people I've listened to focus on seriously building relationships with other people and you don't have to be like hey i think the world's gonna end like let's grow a garden together you don't have to do that you could you could just be like hey you have eggs i need eggs like yeah. hey i butcher chickens do you need chickens or hey you have pigs can i buy them and then process them myself you know just things like that. If you live out in the country, I guarantee you all those things are possible where you can just go find a farmer and you could just buy a pig from them and kill them yourself, probably on their property, and they'd help you. And then go do it yourself. Or go find eggs. Dude, I was at the grocery store the other day, right in town. Guess how many 18 eggs cost? You told me, but you can tell the audience. Well, guess again, because I think you forgot. Uh, seven eighty nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over seven bucks for eighteen <clears throat> eggs. Were they golden eggs? No, and guess what? That food ain't getting any cheaper anytime soon. Yeah, it's just gonna keep getting worse. Yep. I mean, it's not gonna get better. I was talking to my buddy the other day, and I was like, "They're forcing me to cr- start my own farm." I oh. just got to start doing every everything myself because everything's getting so expensive. I just have to figure out how to make the cheapest meat I can and the cheapest eggs I can. Are you familiar with the meat um, long pig? I'm not sure I want to know what that means. It's human meat. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I learned that from Supernatural show. Long pig. Oh. What well, part of the human is that? No, 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 just humans are considered long pig. Because we're tall, our bodies are long. And we look like pigs. Yeah, a little bit. Have you ever seen a skinned bear? N- no. Yeah, a bear, like when you field dress a bear or whatever, where you take the skin off, hang it upside down. Looks a lot like a human. It's weird. Kind of creepy. Yeah. Super weird. Anyways, you were talking about the farming thing. I was going to ask you, have you, I, I, and we had just talked about um, how it takes a while to, to advance your farming skills. I don't really understand growing, growing seasons, when you plant something, how long it takes to grow. Can you just plant something anytime and it will grow like however long the the lifespan of a plant is to the part where it, you know, bears fruit? Not entirely. I know I'm no expert. I've only been doing this for like two years. I'm starting to get the hang of it. And like now I'm pretty confident next year. Because I'm going to spend all winter like growing raised garden beds and stuff like that. And wait, wait, what? I'm going to spend all winter growing raised garden beds. Really? In your basement or what? No, like in the in the barn. I guess I could do it in the basement. It'd be in warmer. The barn. Yeah. I'm that was my... gr- I'm not going to grow it. I'm just going to get ready for Hmm. spring. That's what I was thinking. Like, can you put it in your basement? 
I have grow lights and heat mats. Like, could I grow food in my basement? Because I know you can grow like pot or other hydroponics. Like, I know there's ways to do it. But you, if I've you got these can. grow lights, can I can I grow some uh, habanero peppers in my basement? Like any time of the year, like just throw down some seeds or put in a plant. And I would think so. Because I mean, the and we've kind of talked about trying to do that. The seed doesn't really know if it's January or June, right? Not to right. sound like a total retard, but no, you're right. Because I mean, we grow things way beforehand inside to go plant out later a yeah. few weeks later i haven't just i've never grown anything to completion but i wouldn't see why not uh, so I, that that was something i was wondering if you would ever if you'd ever want to try to do that <laughs> i do want to try to do that okay i just, I just don't, I don't think i'm going to try to do that right now heat lamps or you know we have some of those i that's not what i'm going to do over this winter yet you know it'll be future project but what were you we talking about i mean that was my whole point of getting oh no no it. no i i do remember and it was kind of that but i kind of took it as something else so you can grow things you can start right away like strawberry and raspberries if you plant those they're going to take like two three years to actually see anything mm. from it so we planted a raspberry bush right when we got here, basically. Harps is just finding raspberries on it in the last few months, and we've been here two, three years, two and a half years. So they they take a long time to produce fruit. You know, and um like with with vegetables, most of them I think you can start them right away, but then there's other vegetables where like it's okay if you start it a month and a half later than everything else. And I want to say broccoli and cauliflower, you can start later. And I I think next year, because I every year I want to do better with it, but not only do better with it, but be able to produce more. Because I don't want to just have enough food for me. I want to be able to make a whole lot of food to just be able to give to people for one they're just i think they're just eating shit poison food all the time so if if gardening and doing producing your own food isn't just making sure you have food i think it's also making sure you're eating healthy which is also important and i would like to do that for other people so when i when i look at what i'm doing it's not like, oh, it's just my family that's going to get it, right? Like, I I want to be able to either trade or just give people food, you know? So, um, kind of start seeds. It's not start 10 seeds right away, but do like four seeds week one and then four seeds week two and then four seeds week three that way when it comes to fruition it's not all at the same time Mm. yeah because then you either have to eat it or can it or freeze it or Mm -hmm. take care of it but if you give it a gap then like you don't have to do the one vegetable all at the one time now there are some foods that grow and you can harvest and they will grow more like i don't know lettuce you know it grows you cut off some leaves and it continues to grow and you get more yep so i'd say that would be a different category but like zucchinis come all the time tomatoes come all the time you keep um you like rip the lettuce off and that keeps growing Ooh, so there's day. a lot of that i mean like we had peppers and peppers keep coming. Like even, your government you... shut down the entire economy last like two years ago. Like maybe we should should think about these things. And even if you're terrible at it and you fail at it, like it's still good to try it. Well, right. But like if you're going to be terrible at it and fail at it, do it when it doesn't matter. Yeah. 
because when it does matter, you're probably going to be gonna terrible be at it, and you're going <laughs> to fail at it, and then you're you're going to be hungry. Yeah, and you're going to suck at it. It's not something that you can just be able to go. Hey, now I'm now I have a green thumb. You no, should that's, probably that's be doing this shit with, anyways. Same thing with hunting and fishing too. Like you don't just wake up one day and you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you need to build your skills. And not a lot of people have skills these days. Yeah. But we all have our own skills, and that's why it's important to connect with others and find out what skills they have that you can exploit. I mean, uh, trade with and use to the benefit of all mankind. (laughs) No, I do agree. You should find people who know how to do shit. Yeah. There's so many people who are just lazy and don't do anything. (laughs) You. (laughs) (laughs) Feel like it lately. There really is. And then when you start looking around, there's so many people who know how to do things. And like, I don't know, you could be figuring out the shit way beforehand. Yeah, if a well, lot of people YouTube do, still exists. Yeah, before the internet goes away. No, no. I just mean there's a lot of things that a lot of you could be doing. That if the world did go to shit, it wouldn't be as shitty because you'd know how to do something. Shittier shit than it is now. Yeah. So I would just say shut up and get to work. <laughs>